I want to be recorded, uh, don't type in the chat because that's the only thing that you're going to be seeing recorded, but all of us up here will be recording. So back to what Chef Challenge Live is. Chef Challenge Live is a challenge for Chef Ku here where students, you attendees, are going to vote on different polls to decide what chef is going to make tonight. Now, we're going to judge his dish on basis of flavor, creativity, and how he adapts to your challenges. And each poll will go up through Zoom webinar and you'll get about 30 seconds to a minute to vote. So we're super excited to have all of you participate. And let us start by actually just talking a little bit about what we have in front of us here. Chef? So today we have some uh, fresh vegetables. Um, this morning I got some uh, uh, vegetables from the student farm. As you can see right here, some real, uh, red peppers, some, uh, some cucumbers, some green beans, some eggplants, uh, some fresh herbs here. I got uh, mint cho uh, a chocolate mint, uh, cilantro, uh, fresh basil, some fruit, avocados, some proteins. Seems like we got some um, shrimp here and chicken legs and uh, sides of salmon here. So I'm, I'm excited to uh, uh, cook a dish tonight. And all these ingredients, they're really fresh and local, which is one of the great parts about living here in Davis and going to school here at UC Davis. Now, without further ado, I'd like to start us off so Chef can get cooking with the first poll of the night. Now, you all are going to choose the cuisine that Chef has to adhere to. Now, your choices are going to be Asian, Latin, and American. So here we go, the poll is up, 30 seconds. Chef, of those three cuisines, which one would you like to cook and why? I think I, I, I wanna at least cook Asian. I, I, I'm so com I think I'm comfortable with that. I think it's just in my background. Uh, I'm familiar with it. And if I did get to, if I did choose, if I did get to cook Asian tonight, I'd probably make maybe some sort of a salmon poke for you or, so, or shrimp poke or, or something like that, you know? Man, that does sound delicious. All right, so it looks like the poll is closing and we have our winner. It is Asian. All right, yes. look at that. You, well, it looks All like right. the ball is in your park. So unfortunately, you know, we saw the beautiful salmon and the beautiful chicken and the beautiful shrimp. Unfortunately, we're not going to let you cook with any of those proteins. Oh, no. So we're going to go ahead and swap out these proteins for some other proteins. Okay. We've got some chicken, a whole chicken though, not these lovely cut pieces, but a oh. whole chicken. We have tofu, and we have an entire red snapper, which you would have oh. to fillet. So students, attendees, please, which one are you going to make chef use? He does not get the luxury of these beautifully already cut and de-skinned and filleted pieces. Chicken, tofu, red snapper. Now tofu, I think, you know, it goes well with the Asian theme. Uh, what would you do if you had to get a whole red snapper? What, what's that gonna do? I don't know, that's, I, I have to really dig deep into my, uh, my background. If I, you know, if we did get red snapper, maybe we can do some steam uh, red snapper with some fresh vegetables, serve it over rice or serve it over some, uh, um, I don't know, but the, maybe some curry rice or something. All right, so I think the results are coming in and it looks like the protein of your choice is going to be fish. All right. Is it? The red All snapper. All right. You are going to have to deal with an entire red snapper. Chef, I'll come around and grab this for you. Uh, yeah, here you go. All right. So, what is the first step in this red snapper? It is a whole red snapper. Uh, what are you going to have to do with this? I'm telling you, man, it's, uh, oh, it's, it's definitely challenging. I mean, it's, it looks super fresh. I'm super excited for cooking this red snapper. Are you excited, I'm, serving me the eyeball? Uh, if you want to, yes. I prefer not. I prefer <laughs> not. Hopefully, you all agree that I should uh, not have to eat the eyeball. 
I would, uh, I would uh, like I said, make a steamed fish with some fresh herbs and uh, serve it over uh, rice or maybe lentils or some sort of curry, uh, curry rice. I, I would say, and maybe if I if I get a chance, maybe we do some. Uh, um, if we have enough time, maybe we can do fried rice. That sounds very delicious. All right, so I I, I guess I better get going. All right, go ahead and start. I'm gonna let you go ahead and get going. Now, for all of you, for all of you that are watching, uh, I'd love to know where you all are. I know that some of you must be nearby where I am, which is the Tercero Residence Hall area, but put in the chat where you are watching from, whether it's on campus, off campus, at home, in another country. I wanna know where you all are from. Personally, I'm from Davis uh, right now. I grew up in Oakland. So if there's any NorCal people out there in the chat, shout out. Off campus. All right, where are we coming from? Anyone? Oh, all right, we got some Woodland, Sacramento, Bay Area. I think there's some people outside of all of Maine. Hi, we got a live studio audience here. Uh, all right, this is awesome. Fairfield, awesome. Oh, we got some ice stuff in behind us. Sorry for that. Okay, well, this is super exciting. So, Chef? Yes. So, are you going to do that whole? Or? I'm going to do it whole, but I'm going to, I already made some scores on the, on the fish here. So, I'm going to uh, use a little oil, a little uh, salt, a little pepper, throw some garlic in there. And then I'm going to let it marinate a little bit. And then I'm going to get my steamer ready. Um, I'm going to get my steamer ready and we're going to start steaming this because uh, it's going to take a long time to, to cook this fish. I'm going to cook it whole. I'm very excited. I, it's not that often that I actually have a whole fish. Uh, usually, you know, you get filet, like the slices of salmon that we saw earlier. But man, you're uh, hard at work with that chef knife too. Look at that. Just cutting off the tail. tail. Yep. That's not edible? Not edible. All right. No, no. fish tails tonight. So, yeah, so, here we go. All right, in it goes. And what kind of steamer will you be using? I have a bamboo steamer um, set up, and then... Uh, it's almost like you knew they were going to choose Asian. I feel like, you know, you brought your bamboo steamer. I, I you know, honestly, I had to be, I had to be, uh, be prepared, you know? I mean, um, there were so many unknowns, and so I got, I got a wok, I got saute pans, I got bowls, I got steamer. I mean, if you look over here, I got all these other ingredients. I got balsamic vinaigrette. I got, I mean, not vinaigrette, um, champagne vinegar, uh, tortilla broth. I mean, there's a variety of things, tortillas, bread, to make everything. So I'm good. Let's see. Awesome. All right. So I'm what's gonna, your next step right now? So my next step is I got I to gotta make a marinade, right. um, chop some garlic. All right. So, you no, know, you keep using the chef knife, and it almost seems a little unfair that you have such a nice knife, and it's so sharp, and you're doing so well with it. I almost think that we should maybe swap it out. So, for the next five minutes, we're going to switch which knife he can use. So, we've got two options for him. We have a utility knife and a paring knife. And you can now see those two knives on your screen. Feel free to choose which one Chef will have to use for the next five minutes of this challenge. Again, we're gonna swipe, swap out his lovely Sharp Chef knife for the paring knife or this small little bread knife. All right. Now let's see, we've got Results are coming in, about 10 more seconds. All right, chef. It looks like we are swapping your chef knife for the bread knife. What? You're doing what? All right. Uh, yeah. Here, let me wash it. Hand that over to you. So we're going to take a swap here. I will take this and you will get that. And I will set a timer for five minutes and then you can come back and reclaim this knife. 
How am I going to cut with this? I don't know. You're going to have to tell me. <laughs> How are you going to cut with that? All right. right. Let's see. We've uh, got the five-minute timer on. Oh, All right. No. So what is the big difference between having the chef knife versus this tiny serrated well, knife? Well, first off, let me tell you something. This is what not to do. <laughs> okay, this is what not to do. Do not use a bread knife to cut, uh, to cut fish, to cut vegetables. Bread knives are meant for um, bread, <laughs> to slice bread. Yes, So I, I figured in the name. Um, now what is that that you're talking so about? So this is a little, spicy. it's a little chili pepper. I'm just gonna uh, add a little bit of chili in there. Some, uh, I threw some uh, basil in here, some uh, chocolate mint. Uh, and then I'm gonna cut some green onion, and this is basically just just to uh, for flavor, for as you that, can see. For those that don't know me, I have an incredibly weak spice tolerance, so just seeing something red is gonna scare me. Now, chef, I do want to remind you that for this challenge, you do have actually only 45 minutes to complete the entire challenge. Oh, so there is a time component. Is this? Having this knife for five minutes, is this going to slow you down in any way? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm um, nervous right now. <laughs> uh, but actually, I, I think I'll be okay. Um, yeah, so. So one see. of the great things about living and being in UC Davis is that we have an amazing dining program. And the dining commons and our newest restaurant, Latitude, which well, is not open right now because of the pandemic, but hopefully will be soon. They have amazing things, amazing recipes, amazing dishes. Chef, I know that you've created some of those recipes yourself alongside of a lot of your other chefs. Are there any recipes at the Dining Commons that are your favorite? Uh, yeah, I mean, we have uh, chicken katsu is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, shrimp and pasta, it, it, yeah, I think you guys may have had it tonight. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, my 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 go to is uh, the mushroom uh, blended burger uh, mm. that we always have. It's nice. Uh, it's got a good flavor profile in it, so I really enjoy that. And so we also have different markets around campus as well. And Latitude actually has a market that is serving a brand new Hawaiian themed uh, hot food and poke bowl to go. So if you're looking for something different and you know don't want to go to the DC. Definitely check out Latitude Market. It's got some really good food. I had their barbecue beef the other day and it was fantastic. Well, Chef, you have another two minutes with that knife, but it looks like you're, uh, you've created some kind of a marinade here. I did. So basically what I did was I made a soy sauce, fish so uh, soy sauce and fish sauce to mix in with some lemon, um, some uh, oil, um, again, the fresh herbs. Um, yeah, I gotta season this. See. Seasoning is important. You got some salt there, I see. Even though you're using soy sauce and, and fish sauce, it does a lot of seasoning for you, but you just need it just a little bit more. Just and then black pepper. Basic seasoning. Mm, wow, that looks great. Unfortunately, I can't smell too much because we were wearing a mask. And just look at that. I mean, it's got, oh, it looks really good. I'm very excited to see where you're going with that. Now, I know that. You're not just going to serve me a fish, right? Um, absolutely not. I got, I got, you know, I got my secret weapon right here. It's my uh, rice cooker. I got. Uh, I'm gonna grab. Come over here. I'm gonna grab some uh, while my fish is marinating. Maybe some jasmine rice. All right. Looks good. Looks good. So, as chef starts his rice, I think that we maybe should talk about our next poll. Now, we're going to actually swap out his jasmine rice, uh, or we can use it and figure a way to use some other starches. Now, some of these starches are going to be very popular with uh, college students. Number one we're going to have is a beautiful Top Ramen. Uh, we're not associated with this company in any way, but we're very excited to be using it. We're also going to have lovely boxed mac and cheese. And one of my personal favorites of pasta, orzo, something I cooked a lot in my freshman year. So these are your three starch options to swap out for chef, or he can use them in addition. So let's see, wow, ramen and mac and cheese, it looks like are very close. 
Chef, if you get ramen, what are you gonna do? That, I mean, that seems like it's gonna play pretty easily into this dish. I think it's gonna play pretty easy, but I think it's challenging to make a ramen fried rice. Mm, yes. So true. I, I gotta, you know, maybe come up with something crazy. Well, okay, well, before we announce the polls to you, we're gonna actually let you have your chef knife back. Sweet, safety so, first. Here you go. There you go. Thank you. We'll take these away. And now for the results of the poll. So, and it, oh, well, sorry, before you get started, it looks like mac and cheese is, is the winner. Oh man, all right, So mac and cheese it is. You're gonna have to do mac and cheese with this. Uh, this will be very interesting. So chef, I'm gonna hand you some lovely mac and cheese, a commonality for, uh, a college freshman experience, or even if you're a first year transfer student. For those at home, what are some of your favorite things to make? Now, I loved box mac and cheese as a kid, but once I got to college, I started really enjoying making like pasta dishes, especially because I could have them with friends, and they were something that, you know, you could add a little thing here or there, and it really elevated. So, I'm curious to know what you all like to make. Smoothies interesting ah cereal one of my favorites uh quesadillas honestly are an amazing breakfast lunch and dinner option i love to throw uh like onions and ham in those pad thai now that is fancy and i like it a lot um so before chef what are you doing now now that my fish is married i'm gonna uh, pop it in the steamer and i'm gonna hope that this steamer would actually cook Oh, cook yeah. it all the way through. Will it, will it? So, what's the steamer? How does this work? So, steamer is a bamboo steamer. So, I sit this on top of the uh, saute pan, and hopefully, it doesn't, you know, go crashing on me. So, what is the benefit of using a steamer over maybe just uh, pan frying or sticking in the oven? Mm. The, the, the steaming it actually gives it a unique flavor profile in the um uh, it's just another uh, another cooking technique uh, that allows um flavor to uh to present itself interesting so when you're searing um you're adding flavor from the pan and when you're steaming you're adding flavor from the steam Interesting. I did not think you could actually add uh, flavor from steam. So, so it's too big. Too big. So what are you going to do? So I'm going to cut it in half. All right. We're cut it. So which part are we losing? We're going to... All right. Looks like no more head. No more head. All right. You're free on that one. All right. So you got your fish in your steamer. You're going to close that steamer basket. How long is it going to have to steam for? Um, it's going to steam for most of the time. All right. Um, so. Well, I'm very excited to see that. Now, Chef is showcasing some pretty unique uh, culinary skills here. I'm curious to know, for those who cook at home, what culinary skills do you have? What, what kind of techniques do you like to do? I know that I'm a big fan of making my own whipped cream. It's something new that I discovered during sheltering in place. Uh, also, another one that I learned during sheltering in place has been the art of making sorbet and ice cream. It's been a lot of fun, and I've made some delicious raspberry and strawberry ice cream. But I'm curious to know what you guys have tried. All right. So it looks like people can do, you know, one or two dishes. That's pretty good. Um, oh, and it looks, well. looks like we're going to be adding some mac and cheese. Hopefully everyone here has tried to boil water before, which is a key aspect of both pop ramen and mac and cheese, great college staples. Um, Just grabbing some peppers. Also, another thing is we have 35 more minutes, Chef. So I hope that fits into your timeline with your uh, steamed fish over here. I hope so too. Um, it's gonna take every minute of it. Every minute of it. All right, so you're grabbing some fresh vegetables here. Now, you want to talk a little bit about 
uh, where some of our ingredients actually come from. I know some of them are extremely local. So we, uh, yeah. yeah, so I mean, like I said this uh, earlier, um, I uh, went over to a student farm this morning, and, and so I, got, I have here some uh, uh, Chinese long beans, and these are actually grown here on campus. Uh, these are some bell peppers. Uh, actually, they're not bell peppers. They're lunchbox bell peppers, and they're sweet peppers. So it's, it's actually, instead of uh, hot, it's going to be sweet. I'm very excited um, for that. Some asparagus. Uh, these are not locally grown, but I think that's going to add uh, great to the dish that we're going to be um, executing. Yeah, that's super exciting. One of the cool things about UC Davis's dining services is that we do get a lot of local food. I personally have actually been to quite a few of the farms, including uh, our tomatoes. Every year we get a lot of tomatoes, and we make a lot of tomato sauce, also salsas. Uh, I also went this year to where we get our broccoli. It's literally 30 minutes away and it gets from, they pick it in the morning and it gets delivered to our campus in that afternoon. One of the other really interesting ones that we had was egg. So we got eggs this year from one of the avian research facilities from one of their research projects and it's just really cool to see how close uh, UC Davis is to the food that you eat, and it's really a great way to learn more about the food that you're eating. So what's this cutting technique that you're doing right now? Seth? So right now, I'm, uh, it's, it, for me, it's, uh, this is a julienne cut. So I, I just basically cut everything on the same size. You can see, kind of like a matchsticks uh, style. And then this just a uh, little, um, basically uh, dice or chop. So what is one of your um, favorite kind of chopping techniques? I know that dicing, there's julienning. Do you have a, uh, one that you prefer? One that I really like is, an, is, I call this the oblique cut. The oblique cut. And it's like rolling, roll and cut. And it looks like that. When, and it's like, like, a op, like an off-shaped triangle. Mm. Off-shaped triangle. The steamed fish is starting to smell actually really delicious. Now, as Chef is making some beautiful cuts with these beautifully fresh vegetables, we're gonna throw in another little twist, Chef, if you don't mind. You are. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are going to uh, showcase some other vegetables that exist. One of them is gonna be a canned whole heart of palm. Okay. We're gonna also have canned green beans or and this one is a personal favorite, veggie chips. Uh, so attendees, vote on which of these you'd like to see Chef have to use. Now, Chef, I know what canned green beans are, I've had them. I've also had these uh, veggie chips, but what are heart of palm? Heart's of palm, I mean, it's basically a palm, uh, it's the, a, a, palm tr a baby palm tree, um, and it's the heart of the palm, uh, palm tree. So you have to completely cut around it, uh, and and take out the uh, the heart of it, so it's an actual plant. Uh, plant. It's right. Very flavorful. It's got uh, it's, it's got some woodiness uh, flavor profile in it. Um, um, yeah, I mean, soft and tender. Interesting. I'm very excited to try that. All right. So it looks like the voting is done, and it looks like that we're going with veggie chips. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Let me come around and get these veggie chips for you. Um, I, yeah, I'm not sure what you're going to do with those. Honestly, what is your plan? Well, uh, first off, I love Elmo. Oh, yes. So, I also uh, love Elmo. So, I mean, um, he, if he's, you know, you can find uh, ve uh, veggie chips at one, uh, some of our markets, too. Oh, so, I mean, like, Look at um, that. so, um, this is where I grabbed them from. Um, yeah, no, I, I have no idea now. Yeah, um, that's a, such a twist. I mean, they're crunchy, they're salty, they're not really... The, like airy also you're not going to cook them are you i don't know yet um i might use it I, yeah i mean maybe we'll use it for a garnish or something i mean i don't know uh, uh, well chef and right. your time is counting and you know again one of the great things is that there are markets all over campus and you can get things just like veggie chips you can also get drinks you can get a sandwich to go or salads and if you're, let's say, like me when I was a student and you forget to have uh, a blue book or a Scantron, 
You can go in there and get any testing supplies. Maybe you skinned your knee, fell off your bike, get a Band-Aid. So the markets have a lot of different things. They are located in Tercero, Segundo. There is one in Silo. There's also one that just opened. It's our brand new market. It is Sage Street Cafe and Market, and it is located by the Green at West Village, which is really cool because of the Green at West Village. If you are living there right now, say hi in chat. Uh, but it's super exciting because that just opened up, and we're very excited for all of you who are living with us there and maybe eating at Sage Street. All right, Chef, what are you up to? So I, I'm picking some herbs. This is going to be uh, an interesting, uh, an interesting uh, mac and cheese uh, fried or fried mac and cheese, uh, kind of like a fried rice version. So I'm excited. But the herbs are growing in it as a flavor profile. As you can see, in an Asian cooking, we use a lot of fresh herbs. Um, it, it, it enhances, it provides a lot of uh, unique flavors. Um, so most basic, uh, green onion, cilantro, basil, and mint. Delicious. I'm super excited. Now, I love mint. Uh, I used to actually grow some mint in my garden box on my patio until I killed it accidentally. I'm sorry. Um, but so it sounds like people still want you to use those eyeballs uh, in the dish. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> You're just going to bend and let them tell you what to do? I know. But it sounds like the chat really wants the eyeballs. So I think we should vote you're on gonna it. You're going to have to, you want them to vote on the eyeballs? I think there's a resounding yes in the chat. So I think you're going to have to make those eyeballs somehow fit into this dish. And also, I'm going to have to stomach them uh, later on at, toward the end of this. Now, is, would, is doing the eyeballs, is that going to mess with your timing? Um, no. I think it okay. should be, how, how much time do we have? You're looking at 25 minutes right now. Okay. Um, I think we're, we're going to be good. We'll, we'll be okay. Are you nervous? Uh, students are curious. Are you nervous about the time? Um, I'm nervous about the eyeball. You're nervous about the eyeball. I'm also nervous about the eyeball. So, let's see. All right. So, so yeah, how are you? Well, I'm just going to actually... We'll make a soup out of it. How about that? We're gonna that? make a soup out of the eyeball. Yeah, we'll make a fish, oh. uh, fish, uh, fish eyeball soup or something. Fish eyeball soup. Now that, what's that piece that you've got right there? So this, this is the uh, the gill part. Ooh, crunch. And then and this is the head. So. So is anything in the gill really uh, edible, or just stock and soups? But actually, it's just for stocks and soup. All right. So I'm very excited about uh, this eyeball fish head soup predicament. But you know, keep an open mind. That's one of the things that I'd like to say about when you're in college is definitely keep an open mind about everything, not just food, but keep an open mind about uh, you know making new friends. I know that everyone is doing things virtually, and it can be a little intimidating to speak up during your. It can be a little intimidating to speak up during your orientation sessions or even during class, but I really would say recommend that you go and put yourself out there. You know, turn on your camera, talk to your friends, make friends. Uh, don't let anything scare you. College is a really exciting time of your life, and I really recommend that you make the most of it, even in this shelter-in-place s time. So mac and cheese. It looks like it's almost ready. What are you going to do with that? I was going to strain it, and then I'm going to see how I can incorporate a, uh, like I said, uh, maybe a mac and cheese fried rice. So are you going to actually use the cheese? Um, I, mm, yeah, maybe. Oh, okay. That, 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 that's definitely adventurous. So question for all of you. Are you more of an adventurous eater, or do you like to eat the same thing that you're used to all the time? I know that when I was growing up, I really liked eating the same thing over and over, whether it was mac and cheese, pizza. Uh, I also really liked sushi. But as I got older, I definitely have spread more to this adventuresome side. 
Chef, how about you? Do you like to stay within a comfort zone or spread out? Um, I like to stay in a comfort zone, and okay. uh, just because I, I, I like my own, my I have my own personal flavor profile, and uh, you know, I, I eat what's um, for me. I I, I like uh, what, uh, I like to taste what food is. So if I'm okay. so if I'm eating bell pepper, I want to taste that bell pepper. If I'm eating um, chicken I want to make sure it's chicken it's not tofu so that makes a lot of sense and sometimes you know the, the best uh, side of it is just let food be let, let, let food be. be the food you know and yeah. and and flavor profile so I got my uh, I got my uh, pasta here cheese sauce here um, vegetables here I'm, I'm gonna make a maybe uh, let me clean up my so one of the other really great things about the dining commons in particular is that it does cater to everyone's kind of flavor profiles. You'll find something for you if you are someone that's not very adventuresome with your food. If you are adventuresome, you're also going to find things if you have, you know, any kind of dietary restrictions. The dining commons and their staff do a really good job to make sure that we have the ability to, ooh, things are getting hot over here, I can hear it, uh, that we have the ability to accommodate everything. So if you have a dietary restriction, be sure to just ask uh, the staff and they will help you in any way they can get you the food that you need. Oh. Okay, so here we go. Um, here's my oil. All right, I know what happens when hot oil goes into it, or a pan gets hot oil. I'm gonna stand a little bit back because we're gonna get a little bit of a splatter, I think. Um. But everything's smelling really good, even though I'm a little nervous about that mac and cheese sauce thing you just dumped into that thing. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I've never seen mac and cheese sauce like that. So, so it looks like the chat has also named the fish. Uh oh. To, guys, I have to eat this. Why would you do this? The fish's name is Remy. Uh, chat, why is the fish named Remy? I'm very curious to know. Also, nervous now because Remy is being steamed and boiled into soup. Um, all right, so you said a fried rice, a mac and cheese fried, fried rice. Fried mac and cheese fried. I'm gonna. Uh, my pasta's already cooked. I'm gonna throw some garlic, some vegetables, cook that away. Um, and when you when we're when we're cooking, you uh, when you are sauteing, you want to make sure that you have a a hot pan. That way, you sear the uh, whatever you put in the pan. It, it sears and it seals that that uh, juice. So that's why uh, everyone cooks, or I love to cook with hot pans. So that makes sense. Now, chef, I do want to point out that you do have a little bit of a boil over right here. Is that okay? That's okay. Okay. Um, Making sure. It's um I, I, I heard this term once and, and I it's it's when you're cooking your equipment's are talking to you. You're 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 listening to the food and they're 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 flashing away and they're making sounds and they're they're actually cook, uh, talking to you while you're cooking. So um if that makes sense. Awesome. All right, All right. there goes my pasta. Oh, wow, there goes the pasta. Man. Yeah, secret ingredient. Now, everything is smelling really good. Um, as you now are adding your mac and cheese sauce for your fried mac and cheese rice thing. But this, the steamed fish right now is decadent. It smells amazing. Like, I don't know if it's probably cooked yet, but I would just probably start eating it if I could. Um, people also want to know, actually, well, let's talk about that. How does that taste? Cool. I want you to know, I love it. All right. Uh, people want to know what you're doing with those veggie fries. They haven't seen them in a while. Um, I'll make sure it's on the dish. All right. You're going to make sure it's on the dish in yep. some way. Sorry, chat. You're going to have to hold out there for a little bit. Uh, all right. So now you've got the fish head soup eyeball stuff ready. Um, how's that looking? What are you going to look for here? You want to get a close up on this eyeball that turned white. Oh. Okay, I will let our second camera get a nice look at that. There you go. Bright white eyeball. Nice and uh, 
So this is a very basic um, sweet and sour uh, soup um, that, I, that I put together. I want to see if I have any miso. Maybe add a little miso into it. All right, you got some Speaking miso. Speaking of miso. Look at that. Prepared. Having a stocked uh, cabinet in your kitchen is super handy. Uh, what are some of your favorite ingredients to have in your kitchen? Um, you want to have, I mean, you, depending on, oh, uh, depending on what you like to cook mostly. I mean, basic garlic, basic, um, basic garlic, garlic, onion, uh, go with, uh, Italian spice, uh, seasoning because it's got your dry basil, your dry oregano, your dry rosemary, your dry thyme all in, in mix in. So, um. Uh, things like that, I, I, I tr try to keep um, to you know keep it as simple. That keep makes it simple. The sense. Chat. What are some of your favorite ingredients to have with your dinners or lunches? I know that I'm a big fan of cinnamon on a lot of things in this time of year. Uh, cinnamon, of course, is a great fall specialty with pumpkin pie. I like it on my hot chocolate. Uh, another one that I really do enjoy a lot is actually right here, pomegranates. They're one of my favorite. Um, chef, yes. if you don't use this tonight, can I take it home? Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Absolutely. I do love myself a good pomegranate. It's going to really depend on you guys, though. We'll okay. see. We'll see nice. what happens we'll at, see, at we'll the end of the night. We'll see if I survive tonight, right? We'll see. OK, so if I'm right, yeah. turning it off. Oh, we're checking oh my gosh. Smells, Ooh, smells great. On yeah. there. That's beautiful. Oh, ooh. can we see, let the camera see that one more time? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. that is. It smells really good, everyone. I'm actually quite excited. You know, this is probably the part of the meal I'm most excited for tonight is this dish. Uh, it smells amazing. It doesn't have really anything too weird in it going on. There's no mac and cheese. There's no fish eyeballs. Uh, so, Chef, we are down to about 15 minutes. Okay. How are you feeling? Um, I feel good. Good? Okay. So, I still haven't seen any kind of idea about those veggie fries, though. It's going to be probably be crunchies on top of the dish. Crunchies on top of the dish. Yeah. Okay. I'm probably just going to, you know, honestly, it tastes... I'm going to take one, too. Tastes just... See how that goes. Has a nice crunch. I don't want to ruin it. You know, I don't want to... Cause I already cooked the fish. I don't want to crush it up and make make uh, make a crust um, uh, snapper with crust veggies on it. So I'll just use it as garnish, uh, crunchy. All right. Um, now you're gonna add rice to this mac and cheese thing. Um, I know that the rice. No, is in the I, back. I the rice is in the back. I was gonna make a fried rice, but I think um, you know with with the with one of the sabotage tonight i think we're, we're gonna go with uh, mac and cheese fried rice so i'm i'm ready to go this honestly is very interesting I, I i i'm very i'm very interested to see how this goes now you still have a little bit of time so i don't know if you want to maybe make anything to go on the side and elevate the dish a little bit i don't know um maybe, maybe like a salad or sure yeah i mean maybe. I got some time. Let's see. So we do have um, one little, little surprise here. Okay. I'm up for surprises. The, up yeah, surprises. I'm all about surprises tonight. Let's right. do it. So here's your options because you know you could make a salad, but that's a little simple. I want to see something amazing. So here are your options. I'm going to give you three. Are you ready? Okay. One, you're going to have to take a vegetable from up here. Okay. And I'm just making sure there's no other vegetables. And you need to make a beautiful kind of flower out of it. Okay. To adorn your dish. Got it. Your other option is you can make an appetizer, uh, preferably with some of these fresh ingredients as well. But it needs to not just be one ingredient. You need to make a good full appetizer or a drink of some sort. Now, I don't really see anything to make a drink with. Uh, but the chat's going to tell you what you're going to do. You <laughs> actually have no choice. Of the three, though, which one would you prefer to do? Let's see. Um, well, it's a good thing I brought my vegetable knife. Uh, let's see, my vegetable carving knife. You, you had it earlier. Oh, did I take your vegetable I, carving knife? Uh, it's right I think, over here. Yeah, I mean, good thing I brought that. 
I, I should be able to, you know, easily carve a couple of, you know, couple of vegetable flowers uh, using the vegetables I got. Uh, speaking of pomegranate, I mean, if, if, if we, that yeah. could be a dream. That could be a dream. Um, and it's hot in this kitchen. There's yeah. steam, there's a hot pans. And then maybe uh, for an appetizer, it, I don't know. I mean, let's see what we got. I know we got some avocados. Oh, edamame. Um, oh, maybe edamame. there's some fresh peach. Oh, very nice. So speaking of drink, maybe that it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a peach drink. Um, I don't know. Maybe. All right. Well, let's see what the chat has decided on. We're just going to give them about 15 more seconds before we close that up. So make sure to get your votes in. And I am on the side of a drink. It's really warm over here. Uh, you know, a little bit of sweat going here. So I'd like something refreshing. Okay. But we'll see. We'll see. We're going to wait to see what the chat has to say. All right. Three, two, one. And we're closing the polls. And the winner is... Oh, all right. We are going to be carving a vegetable flower. Unique. All right. Unique. So uh, which of those vegetables Jesus. are you going to do this flower? Am I, am I being time or am I just you know, going to... Yeah, let's throw a bit of a time constraint. I'm going to give you five minutes once you get back to your cutting board okay. to make this beautiful vegetable flower. And, you know, I'm expecting uh, something amazing. Okay. Amazing. Well, I don't know what amazing looks like. Let's. Uh, you you only giving me five minutes. Five That's minutes, it. and you're at your cutting board. Here we go. We got five minutes on the clock. Five minutes on the clock. And then after that, you do have only about two or three minutes afterwards to plate this dish. Okay. And for me to try it, which I'm very excited. Now, for all of you who have joined us tonight, thank you so much. Uh, you can follow us at UC Davis Student Housing or UC Davis Dining Services. Both sides of that, we have all sorts of different posts, and there are sometimes recipe posts that are from our chefs, so be sure to hit that follow button. And, uh, oh, here we go, here we go. Uh, chef, I'm going to move this bowl just slightly. Oh, there you go, you got it. All right. Sorry. Uh, oh, I need okay, ice good. water so that way it'll, it'll bloom up a little bit. So, so they bloom in ice water? Oh yeah. So what? Um, it's you know when you carve a vegetable, it it it, it holds nicer in cold weather, and it, it just like this. You know when it's hot, we want ice cold water. So um, the water would actually help it bloom. Huh? That is so interesting. So got some ice water. Um, well, you know, Chef, there's a lot of people in the chat encouraging you and hoping that you succeed in this challenge. You know, I came into this challenge thinking it was going to be a little weird and taste a little funny, but things smell really good. I am still skeptical about your mac and cheese stir fry, and I'm also skeptical about how you're going to use those veggie fries at the end. But, you know, even this, uh, the fish eyeball soup, it smells actually really good, and uh, I'm quite excited to see how all these come together. You know, do you think that you've stayed true to uh, the cuisine of choice that was given to you? Um, I wish I could have um, done a little bit more um, with, you know, uh, like, like I said earlier, I wish I could have done a poke bowl for you guys, I think. Uh, but, and, you know, taking the salmon away and coming with the, the red snapper, I was, I'm still pretty happy, pretty confident that... Uh, that didn't uh, that we didn't really sabotage our dish tonight. I'm I'm kind of proud. I just you know waiting for the end result to make sure that you know it, it's flavorful and uh, go from there. That is super exciting. And so so people also want to know where they can find you on campus. So I'm actually everywhere. I mean um, a lot of time I'm over at Tesoro Dining Commons. I'm also over at uh, Segundo. Uh, you can find me at Latitude. Um, and we're, you know, we're, we're going to continue to do, uh, throughout the year, we're going to continue to do more cooking shows. So, um, you know, I can always be reached by email as well. And what would your, what email would that be? That would be my first name uh, and last name. For, so K-U-E-H-E-R at ucdavis.edu. So if you have some dining questions or cooking questions, be sure to hit Chef Ku up. And again, you can find more information about those activities that we will be hosting throughout the year at 
UC Davis Dining Services on Facebook and on Instagram. And we sometimes even post things onto our YouTube channel, which is actually UC Davis Student Housing. All right, Chef, you have a minute, 38 seconds what? left. So. Oh, no. You know, I see, uh, and that's just, a, you know, then you've got about two or three more minutes until you got to plate that dish up for me to serve and eat and, uh, you know, give a little bit of judgment of my own. Uh, now, let's, lots of cheers going through the chat right now, though. So people are excited. I think we should do a quick countdown on the flower. Countdown on the flower? <laughs> well, you got a minute, so let's see right, how it goes. Right, so we'll definitely right. count you down when it comes down to the wire for the plating of this dish. So, Chef. Yes. What do you think was the hardest challenge that you were given tonight? I think the hardest challenge tonight that was given to me, I think it was the veggie fries. The veggie fries? And the mac and, and, the mac and cheese. I mean, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to taste the mac and cheese um, and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and judge it for myself, but I, I'm pretty confident. Have you ever done something like that before with um, uh, mac and cheese? Not, not specifically to the mac and cheese. All right. So. Well, I am also excited to see how that goes. And no, we are down to 26 seconds. I'll start counting you down at 10, and that's hands off of those flowers oh. and probably on to plating at that point. Okay. Uh, but um, you do look like you're on your way, but it looks like maybe you're I think I gave up on the, on, on the eggplant. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to not going to make it. All right. not going to make it on the seven, eggplant. Seven, six. Oh. All right. You're just going to pass on the eggplant, it looks like. All right. Three, yeah. two, one. And yeah, that's time. Okay. All right. So here's my little flower. Wow. All right. So. Chat, we're going to have a countdown. Two minutes. Two minutes. Oh, Chef has to plate it. Uh, yeah, two minutes, Chef. Now, that's actually quite beautiful. Um, I'm, you put a, you you put a bell pepper inside of the zucchini, uh, inside of the cucumber. Oh, and I'm also hearing that some people are standing. Sorry. All right. Here's the Chef, mat. Chef, do you know what standing is? Standing, um, please elevate. I, I do not know. Standing does not mean standing up. <laughs> no, Wait, it means sorry. that people really appreciate and are really uh, fans of what you're doing here. You're cheering me on. All right, sure, lots of people cheering you on. Thank you so much. I'm having so much fun. All right, are you plating one dish or two? I'm gonna plate one dish right. right now, and it's gonna be the the. Uh, I started on the um, flowers, flowers and mac and cheese, and then. Alex, you're going to have a, a sweet and sour fish, uh, red snapper soup. All right. And then you got to dig out the eyeballs. And I got to dig out the eyeballs. I get to eat Remy's eyeballs tonight, everyone. This was on you. I blame you. Okay. Chef, we're down to the final minute. All right. So, oops. Counting down here. A little soup. I'm going to put on orange. the actual... 30 second timer when it hits that moment and chat I don't know if you'll be able to see it I'll put it over by our second camera right. oh here we go fish is coming out oh that's beautiful wow that is fantastic it looks so delicate all right tender I'm gonna take this back. Don't forget the veggie chips, Chef. Oh yeah, that's right. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Little crunchies on top. All right, chat. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. There you four, go. Four. Little soup. Three, two, one. All right, Chef. That is beautiful. Now, before we get into it, I do want to take a quick photo of this dish because it is beautiful. We gotta get it for the IG fam. Don't, for don't forget the fish uh, oh. eyeballs. Chef, smell. all right. Yeah, there you go. All right, now, Chef, let's uh, go ahead and talk to me a little bit about what you're presenting here. Okay, so should I come over? Uh, let's. I can come. Can we bring it here? You mind? Bring it anywhere. Yes. I'll yeah, we'll bring it right here. That way, everyone can see us as we. All right. So up. today, uh, I started off with a red, uh, you know, 
honestly, I was gonna, I was super excited to make um, uh, salmon poke tonight, but it didn't happen that <laughs> route. But I got this beautiful red snapper. It was fresh. Um, it's exciting to to be able to allow the steam to to really do its magic. So I made a, a steam red uh, red snapper over mac and cheese fried rice. Um, it's cheesy, I can tell you that. Um, and then I carved some vegetables and garnished it with some uh, vegetable chips. I'm excited. I mean, All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take my mask off, so I'm going to push you back just a okay. bit. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and try this. Uh, again, this was all on you. None of this was prepared in advance. You voted for everything. So, um, any suggestions about what I should start with first? Uh, start with the mac and cheese fried okay. rice. All right, we're going to start with this mac and cheese here. Uh, no, I've never had mac and cheese stir fry. Maybe it smells got, quite good. It's got some cheddar cheese in there. With some, uh... Hmm. You know, <laughs> it has remnants of like a mac and cheese. Chat, it's really good. Does this whole dish have a name? Do you have a name for it? Um, I'm gonna call it, what was the fish's name? Remy. Remy, Remy, Remy esteem Remy. Mm. All right, I'm gonna give you good points on that mac and cheese. It's, it doesn't taste like traditional mac and cheese, but it does taste like it belongs on this plate. All right, fish, soup? Which one should I go? Uh, let's try the fish with the mac and cheese right, together. with the mac and cheese. I would probably start in the tail just because you'll probably, um, uh, you'll, you'll probably prevent some bones. Ah, there we go, look at bones. that. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Just look out for bones, okay? Oh yes, I see that. Okay, we're gonna pull that. All right, got some mac and cheese, some asparagus it looks like, and some fish. Oh my God. All right, I wish you were all here right now. It is so good. I know the people outside at all of are like, hey, bring me some. Um, this fish is delicious, Chef. It is fantastic. All it's right, got, we, we, we did it. It's got really depth of flavor. It's the lemon on it just adds this beautiful acidity. It's absolutely fantastic. The skin is also really good. So, you know, I'm really impressed with how you pulled that together. And it complements the mac and cheese really well, uh, surprisingly. <laughs> The mac and cheese adds this kind of creaminess that the fish doesn't have, and it just goes really well together. <sighs> now, now, the moment of truth. All right, I'm just going to start with the broth here. Okay. Guys, everyone, all right. It smells really good. The sweet and sour miso soup. Mm, it's really good. All right, chat. Everyone in chat needs to spam eyeball if you want me to eat this eyeball. <laughs> I'm only doing it. Okay. All right. I see that chat. Okay. There it is. Uh, here, let's bring it over just so you can see it. It's uh, juicing out some color there. Um, all right, chat. This is for you. Happy Ag orientation. Why? <laughs> Why did I sign up to do this? That was interesting. <laughs> you know, it had <laughs> it has such a weird texture. <laughs> Imagine eating a gelatinous ball, and then all of a sudden, in the middle of it, there is like a piece of hard candy that's not sweet or candy. It's just kind of bleh. Um, honestly. Thank goodness that you put it in a soup broth with some herbs and stuff because that helped the flavor. Um, the aftertaste is a bit kind of like dirt once you break the eyeball apart. Um, but the beginning part was actually nice. It tastes like the soup, which I'm gonna now have more of to get this foul taste out of my mouth. Chat, I don't know if I can forgive you, but you know, you did choose the veggie chips and this is saving it. Now chef, all together I think this dish Honed in on the flavor really well. The creativity was really good. I think you stayed really true to the cuisine. Um, the mac and cheese definitely gave you a bit of a throw. I don't know how better you would have done in any way with that. I think that you did really well putting into like a stir fry, uh, fried rice. 
I might ding you some points on the uh, veggie chips. I think it would have been nice if they were maybe crushed mm. on top. That's a bit overwhelming. Um, but overall, I have to give you an arbitrary eight out of 10 for the whole dish. And let's look at these flowers real quick. Just how beautiful they are. Gotta look at that. Beautiful. I think I get an extra point for All that. All right, we'll give you an extra point for so the So nine and a half points. Nine, nine and a half? All right, oh. I'll go nine and a half. You know, <laughs> Chef here did an amazing job and you know, oh. I'd like to thank you for allowing us to give you this challenge. Absolutely, it's been my pleasure. Um, you know, and, and you know, welcome to UC Davis. I look forward to really, uh, you know, serve you guys at the Dining Commons at the one of uh, some our uh, restaurants. Uh, I look forward to seeing you. If you guys uh, are around, if I'm around, say hi. So, Well, again, thank you so much. And thank you to all of you who came out tonight. I know it's the Saturday evening of your ag orientation, but I'm really glad that you all came out and helped create this dish. I don't know if you'll see this one in the Dining Commons, but I am going to say that it does have my seal of approval on it. So if you do see it, you know where it's from. Thank you. Have a great rest of your Aggie orientation. Follow us on UC Davis Student Housing and UC Davis Dining Services. Go Ags. Have a great rest of your evening.